Hello and welcome to the Driver Hire podcast. My name's Tony from Driver Hire Croydon and Sutton. Hello, I'm Gary from Driver Hire in Colchester. We represent two of Driver Hire Nationwide's network of over 100 offices. And we decided to get together to create a series of regular podcasts for people who want to know more about Driver Hire, but principally to provide hints, tips and tricks to help our drivers be the very best that they can be. Hi Gary, how are you doing? Very well, Tony. It looks like you've caught the sun this weekend. Oh, I think I have actually. Yeah, so um, so the first lovely, sunny, long weekend, the Gosha barbecue was deployed. Um, Cofties, chicken kebabs, um, maybe one or two beers. And um, yes, a little bit too much sunshine. Pity people can't see this, Tony, because it's making me laugh. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, 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 I feel pleased that I'm entertaining you. Um, good, good. Um, so, uh, so Gary, we've got some news to share. Yes, very much so. Um, it's the Driver Hire podcast website. Yes, so we're very excited to announce, um, and, and it could be that you found this podcast you're listening to now via the new website, but if you haven't, because you're already subscribed via Apple or Spotify or Amazon or whichever way you're finding this podcast, um, you, you may not have seen it. So we would love to invite you to go to thedriverhirepodcast.co.uk and uh, within there you'll see some um, some lovely pictures of me and Gary um, but you'll also see the library of, of all the podcast episodes to date um, and the videos that we've shot and you'll also find a contact form if you want to get in touch with us if you want to ask us any questions um, so trucking barbecue tips whatever you want really um, we'll be more than happy to uh, to receive your comments there. A lot of the information we're giving out on our podcast, we've got particular websites to go to, and you, you'll be able to go to our website and click on the link, for example, for the driver hire training, which you'll have later in this episode. Hmm. Excellent. All right. Good stuff. So um, so thank you in advance for taking a look. Um, in the meantime, what are we talking about this week, Gary? Well, let's talk about adding a skill to your driving license. Hmm. Yeah, that's that's right. Yeah, so the last last couple of things we've done, we did a we did a video with um, National Driving Centre about license acquisition and a podcast off the back of that. Um, last time out, we talked about CPC. So those are the kind of two fundamental things that get you on the road as a commercial driver. Um, and I suppose really this is just to talk about what things could you add on to that if you wanted, perhaps a little bit more money or a little bit more variety. You know, what are the common things that people do? Yeah, and um, we've talked loads about having a class two license, and the big one we have a big issue with in this area is class ones. There's loads of work because of the ports. We've got Harridge and Felixstowe sitting on the doorstep. So add E to your license, which is going back to what we've already discussed um, a couple of episodes ago about how to get your HGV license. It's no different to get your E. Hmm. Well, it kind of. Is and isn't different. So, um, but you've been mixing up a bit of terminology there, Gary. Which um, ah. um, you, you're using the um, the last century terminology, which uh, everybody still does in the industry. But we we talk about class two and class one. So class two being the one that doesn't bend, and class one being the one that does bend. And of course, in, when we talked about license acquisition, we talked about getting your cat C or class two, as us old duffers call it. Um, but the C plus e is the is a, a rigid vehicle plus a trailer that could be either an arctic or a drawbar but you're absolutely right that would be a really good upgrade to do because obviously that that opens up a whole new world of work for you and um in some cases a bit of extra cash as well yeah i know i pay extra for a um, class one uh, driver and i know most people do around the country and there tends to be more work for class one drivers in my area mm. So if you want to upgrade to class one from class two or add the E to your C, whichever way you want to say it, it's actually slightly less complicated than getting the Cat C license in the first place because the, the, the you know, having the Cat C is your provisional to get the, the E and you don't have to go and do all the theory tests again that we talked about before. So it's a, you know, it is a, is a kind of a, a one-shot test to get to get that extra license. But of course, you need to be able to manoeuvre 
a vehicle, big vehicle that bends in the middle. Yep, especially on the reversing. It's a little bit of a challenge at the beginning. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah, it's um it's a it's a funny thing. When 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 um when a driver gets the knack for it, it's almost harder to reverse a car than a than a bendy lorry when when you when you've got used to it. Uh, but it is a it is a thing where it just needs to click through having had a go at it a fair few times. Yeah. I've got drivers who are class one drivers, they can't drive a rigid for love or money because they can't reverse them. And they I've got one, Richard, bless him. He, he says, I even struggle to park my car. I put an Arctic anywhere, but I struggle to park my car. Yeah. Yeah, I used to be the same. I'd, I'd spend, a, spend a week in my truck driving all over France. And uh, the amount of times I'd sort of you know, get in my car from the yard to drive home on a Sunday morning and uh, stop at the supermarket to get something for lunch or whatever. And I'd have to really stop and think about, hang on, which way do I steer my car to get in, a, get in the space? Um, but as a, it is a knack, and it you know, and it comes a second nature after a while. But uh, but yeah, and and as I say, two types of C plus E vehicle. So you've got the Arctic or articulated lorry, as we know it, where all of the load space is on the trailer, and you've got a, a tractor unit to pull that trailer. And of course, the other type is. Um, is a, a draw bar outfit, or what we generally call wagon and drags, where, which is where you've got part of the load space on the rigid vehicle and a trailer behind with a, you know, another perhaps half of the of the load space. Hmm. So that's that's one thing. What else might you like to upgrade to, Gary? The one we do loads up here, Hyab. Mm. Well, we say Hyab, it's like saying a Hoover instead of a vacuum cleaner. Uh, yes, yes. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, so... Um, I would suggest that pretty much everybody who advertises for one of these drivers um, advertises for a high ab. I would say pretty much every one of these drivers um, who holds one of these certificates calls it a high ab. But you're absolutely right. Um, you know, we I, I hoover my lounge. I, I hoover my lounge with a Dyson. Um, I, 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 I sell a tape a box with whatever brand of sticky tape it is, but I still call it sell a tape. So it's one of these things. What it is, is, um, you know, to be absolutely specific about it, we're talking about a lorry mounted crane. And there's loads of other manufacturers, Powerfinger, Fassi, Atlas, um, everybody calls them higher. And I bet the marketing departments of all the other manufacturers um, <laughs> cringe every time they hear it. Um, but um, but yeah, so if we say higher, we're talking about a lorry mounted crane. So these are used for all sorts of different things. But the most common one is a builder's merchant where they're perhaps delivering pallets of bricks um, or you know, other building supplies or uh, bags of aggregate. And, and, and a, the crane, lorry mounted crane, will be used to, to unload uh, that vehicle. Yeah, it sits with a cradle at the end that opens and closes so it can grab a pack of bricks. Also has little hooks on so they can pick up other materials if they're not picking up bricks, for example. Hmm. Yeah, so there's um, there's all sorts of different attachments that could go on a lorry mounted crane. So, um, uh, for example, if you were um, open reach putting in telegraph poles, you'd use an auger on on one of those things. That they're very specialist, um, and it's not something that um, that we deal with. The, the things that we deal with commonly are um, brick clamps, as you say, um, to to you know squeeze a pallet of bricks and lift it up. Um, sometimes hook. Uh, so it's simply a hook on the end of the crane, which can be used for picking up a, a bag of aggregates or uh, slings around timber or something like that. Um, and then I suppose the other one is the is the um, is the grab bucket or clamshell. It's sometimes called. So this would be used, um, you know, in, in clearing sites, clearing waste, um, and and literally scoop it up earth from the side of the road from a from a building site, whatever, to go into the back of the lorry to be taken away. So those are the common ones. Um, and it's worth mentioning about how they're operated because um, in the old days uh, you'd have, um, and you still do have levers on the side of the lorry. So that'll operate how the, how the crane rotates, how it goes up and down, how it extends. But these days it's normally done by, by a remote control. Yeah, that's correct. Where they, you've got the battery charging in the vehicle when you get on, Side, so you plug your battery into your control, you come round, you put your legs out, and then you operate it. 
remotely so you can actually walk around with the crane so you can see better than being the wrong side of the vehicle trying to get something put down in someone's garden. Mm. Yeah, absolutely. It's far, far safer to be able to position yourself where you can view not just the load, not just where it's going, but anybody that's sort of walking into your work area that doesn't really understand what you're doing and you know and you can see them and stop them before you know, before accidents happen. So it's a it's a it's a far better way of doing things. So yes, if you're considering getting yourself a HIAB or should I say lorry mounted crane certificate, what you really want is to have block clamp hook and remote on that certificate. And uh, all training providers will understand uh, what's meant by that when you talk to them. Yep, that's correct. Um, the next one I want to talk about, Tony, we've got to use another name like Hoover. This one time it's Moffat. <laughs> yes, so uh, Moffat are a manufacturer of lorry mounted forklift trucks. So if you've ever been driving along and you've seen a forklift truck um, strapped to the back of a or chained to the back of a, of a of a truck going down the road that will be a demountable forklift truck but um, much like higher for cranes uh, Moffitt is the word that everybody uses it's just one of a number of manufacturers of these things and of course the advantage here is that there'll be some types of delivery where perhaps a higher would be no good because they might not be able to get the vehicle right into the access point. So with a Moffat, of course, the driver can unload himself and use the forklift to take that load right into wherever it needs to go. So it can be very versatile for, for some types of deliveries. Yep. Um, one in our area around here, we've got um, lawns. So all the, your lawns being taken to your house. So can't get the lorry very close. They park the lorry up. Treat it like a forklift. Well, it is a forklift. It's just a mobile one from the back of the lorry. You can pick up the goods and bring it round to your front garden, put it on your drive. Mm. Excellent. Okay, well, the, the next one on uh, our list is um, that, uh, that lovely TLA, or three-letter acronym, <laughs> um, ADR. And last time out, Gary, I taught you how to say this, so it's your turn. What's ADR stand for, Gary? Um, I've got a... Pass this one back to you, Tony, because <laughs> I can't say it. <laughs> I'm, I'm sure it's your turn, <laughs> but yeah, it might well be. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so ADR is the is, is the certificate you need to carry dangerous goods. Uh, ADR stands for in French, uh, accord dangereux routier. Uh, forgive my appalling French accent. I I worked for three years in in uh, in France, Gary, and I. I picked up many things, I love for red wine, I love for cheese, um, but not a good French accent, I'm afraid. <laughs> but um, but Accord Dangereux Routier, translated into English, is Accord, Agreement, Dangereux, Dangerous, and Routier um, is all things road haulage. So it's the um, Agreement for the Carriage of Dangerous Goods by Road. So that comes in two types, which is either packages, or tanks and tanks is an add-on module to packages and the reason why you might need one or the other um, it's pretty self-explanatory but every hazardous good has a united nations reference number and for each of those reference numbered goods there's a maximum package size that it can be delivered in so if you're delivering smaller packages of things, they, they, you might just need the packages certificate. If you're delivering something like, for example, petrol in a great big tanker with you know tens of thousands of litres of fuel in it, then you're going to need the tanks module. Okay. So with ADR, the first three days is packages, and you must do that before you do the tanks part. And as we discussed in our last episode on CPC, you can get 21 hours of CPC on your packages. You then take the exams on the next day and the Thursday afternoon and the Friday morning, in most cases, is when you do the knowledge on how to get your certificate to um, carry petrol and such like in tanks. Okay. So there's it's worth mentioning there's nine parts to, or nine different modules within CPC and those nine, uh, nine different things represent nine different types of hazard and um, most courses will cover seven of the nine and um, the two that are most often left out um in fact pretty much always left out unless you go on a specialist course um, would be explosives 
and radioactives um, and you can see they're obviously very specialist things and tend to be specialist courses for those yeah and i can understand why they are specialist i might i'm not keen on carrying some radioactivity about so i'd like to know how to do it properly uh, yes i would agree with you yes so tony why would you want to do these extra things well it's um yeah i mean it, it's you don't have to there's plenty of work available if you don't but firstly most of these these things attract um, a little bit of a premium in pay um, and that of course could be attractive to you and um, who doesn't want a bit more pay but the other thing as well is there's there's more variety of work so if you've got these these um, specialist upgraded skills you just get more choice of things you can do and it makes your work life more interesting if you can do those different things but first consideration is going to be uh, pay but the second consideration, if, you, if you're thinking of doing an upgrade, it's worth doing just a little bit of research in your area. So, so your area is different to mine, Gary. Um, I, I would suggest that you would recommend to drivers to upgrade to Class 1 or Plus E um, in your area. Yes, because there's so much Class 1 work in this area, can most probably compared to yours in central London and such like. Yeah, so, so that's, you know, we're just two offices, but straight away, that the if anybody walked in here today with a class two license saying what's the best thing for me to upgrade to without question in this area is high you know we don't have big class one distribution centers um in this area at all in fact there's very little left within the m25 um that are those big distribute you know, big rdc distribution centers so for us high um now adr not so important here but if you lived in Immingham or something, um, where the refineries are, absolutely, of course, you're going to want to go for ADR. Yeah, when we're very similar to that area, you would think, oh, we'll have loads of ADR in this area, and we don't. I wouldn't recommend people do an ADR course off the back without considering other options first. High Ab is very popular as well in this area because of all the builders, merchants, um, but ADR, there's very little uplift in your pay, and that's one of the reasons you want to do it. Yeah, so I think, um, so anybody listening to this who has a class two and is thinking, you know, what, what what's the next thing I could do? What's, you know, how do I have a life a bit, a bit better paid and a bit more interesting? I would recommend you pick up the phone to your local driver hire office and ask them. They'll tell you what the in-demand things are in that area. And therefore, you're going to get the, you know, the best return on the investment that you put in to that upgrade that you make. Yeah, exactly, because Aberdeen will have a different requirement to yourself, which has got to be, again, different requirement to me in Colchester and so on. Yeah, exactly. You know, and there's, you know, there's 104 different offices around the country and you, you will get 104 different answers to that question. So so do do pick up the phone to your local office and uh, they can talk you through that. <laughs> um, so who's got to pay for all this extra training then, Tony? Uh, you are, Gary. Am I? <laughs> I'm shocked. <laughs> so, um, no, no, it's a, it's a it's a really good question. Yeah, so it kind of depends on what it is and when you're getting it as to who pays for it. So it's not kind of cut and dried. But I would suggest the basic rule of thumb is if you're talking about an initial upskill, it's quite often you that's going to pay for that. That'd be particularly something like the class one upgrade. You know, it's very often going to be the driver themselves that pays for that. If you are with an employer and that employer offers you that upgrade to your license, I would say grab that with open arms uh, yeah. because that's you know one of the most valuable things that an employer could offer you. But other than the class one, all the other things we've talked about have to be repeated um, typically every five years. So generally speaking, what will happen is the first time round, you'll probably end up paying for that yourself, unless, again, you're lucky enough to be with an employer that, that wants to upgrade you. Generally speaking, then down the line every five years, when you're doing that job for that employer, whether it's a hire, whether it's an ADR, whether it's a Moffat, Moffat, then quite often the employer will do that for you. It's not an exact science, but that's the basic rule of thumb. Yeah, I, I invest heavily in HIAB in this area. So when I've had a driver with me for a little while who's never had a HIAB, I would invest in them, put them on the course. We normally organise on Saturdays um, and they give up their time and I pay for the, the ticket and they get the upgrade in the pay. And we both benefit. Yeah, exactly. I, I think that's becoming more and more common now. And it's something we certainly do here. But it's it's about finding the right drivers to train, the, the people with the right 
work ethic and work attitude and customer service skills and client relationships, those are the people that we'll, we'll certainly single out to offer that investment to. Yep, I couldn't agree more because I don't just give that ticket to everyone. That's the people who are going out and we're getting the feedback from the clients. Oh, I really like having Tony in. Can we have him again? Why wouldn't you invest in them? You keep them and you get looked after better. You get a better pay rate for the driver. And that's what we all are here to do is earn money at the end of the day. Mm, absolutely. Okay. And so, so lastly, I suppose there's a bit of hot news off the press because driver hire head office have launched uh, very recently uh, a new license acquisition scheme. So what's happened is that they, so this is driver hire training, and they've partnered with a number of training providers around the country where you can book with driver hire and receive your training local to you. And one of the great things about the new scheme they have is that there's um, payment terms available. So you don't have to pay for it all up front, but you can acquire license upgrades and additional skills around the country close to you. I think this is a cracking idea, Tony. If you're just investing yourself, getting your HGV, and you've got that, and you want the high out to go with it as part of our discussions today, that's got to cost you approximately £500. And I'm not earning any money. What would I do? Well, this is a good way to spread the costs out. I think it is a really good idea and help the marketplace for you to go into and earn more money. Mm. Good. Okay. Well, hopefully we've... Um... We've covered some good information about the kind of common upgrades that people will do. That's not exhaustive. There's plenty of other things around, but these are the more common things that are sought out on a on a daily basis. And yeah, hopefully some good good ideas for people there. You know, I think there's some really good facts we're putting across to different people on how to get the different skills to suit your area, because it isn't just down to one area. Yeah, definitely. And and do get in touch with your local driver hire office for you know for the thing that is most wanted in that area. So that would be a, a really good phone call to make. Okay, so if you've enjoyed it, please do rate, review, and subscribe. And we'll look forward to speaking to you again next time. Yep, yeah, thank you very much. And if you'd like more information on how to get these training courses, please contact your local office or myself and Tony, and we'll happily have a chat with you and see if we can help you. You've been listening to the Driver Hire podcast, and thank you very much. And as goodbye from myself, Gary Richards, at the Colchester office. And from me, Tony Gosher, at the Croydon and Sutton office. If you'd like to get in touch with us, you can find us at thedriverhirepodcast.co.uk. Thank you very much for your time. Bye-bye. Thank you.